All right, some interesting facts from the NRMP 2024 match I'm gonna share with you today. And if you're wondering why the backdrop is different, we're out here in Kyoto, Japan. First thing is a record number of primary care positions. A few numbers here that might confuse you. There was a 92.9% fill rate for primary care residency spots, which sounds pretty good, but it's actually a 1.4% drop from the prior year. And some people might jump to conclusions, start sounding the alarm. Oh my God, we're running out of primary care physicians. Physician shortage, et cetera, et cetera. But let's dive into the numbers a little bit more. This drop in fill rate can actually be explained from one of a few different reasons. So the first is that people just being less interested in primary care positions, which has been a trend for several years. The reasons why you have reimbursement decreasing, you have mid-level scope creep from NPs and PAs, and of course, concerns of AI replacing some aspects of medical care. On the other hand, if you don't do primary care and you choose to specialize, depending on what that specialty is, you know, maybe not for things like radiology, but for many other procedural specialties, much harder to replace with AI, usually better lifestyle and primary care. I mean, there's a lot of burnout just because of all the charting too. Another theory, which I don't think is super likely, is actually related to the Nepal USMLE cheating scandal, which we covered in a previous video here, both on Kevin Jabal MD channel, as well as on Med School Insiders. Now, IMGs and FMGs are crucial at certain residency programs to fill all their spots, especially in primary care specialties. Now, this match cycle, there were roughly 9,000 IMG and FMGs who matched, and 70% of them matched into primary care. Now, this is much higher than any other group, whether it's USMDs, DOs, et cetera, because if you look at the overall percentage of all med students, how many go into primary care? It's 46.8%. So going back to the Nepal cheating scandal, the idea being that program directors are gonna be hesitant. They don't want a future resident to be essentially you know, losing their license because of uh, USMLE issues. And therefore they would rank fewer FMGs than they normally would. FMG, by the way, is for medical graduate, different from IMG. FMG is from another country coming to the US for residency. And IMG is from the US, goes outside of the country for medical school and then comes back for residency. Think of you know students that go to the Caribbean, very common in the US. But when you look at the actual numbers, there are more than 800 more FMGs who matched this year compared to last year. This is the opposite of what a lot of people expected and likely has to do with the sheer amount of FMGs who applied this year versus last, more than 1,500 more. However, the best explanation for the 1.4% drop in the uh, fill rate for these primary care uh, residency positions is actually just the expansion of more primary care positions. So back in 2023, Family Medicine had 5,088, and I Am Categorical was 9,725. But this year, FM was up to 5,213, and Internal Medicine at 10,261. So overall, more than a 4% increase in the total number of primary care positions. That's just in one year. So even though there was a record number of medical students going into primary care, the percentage decreasing makes it seem, again, people can use the data and fudge it up and to kind of portray what they want. They can try to make it seem like the, the primary care shortage is getting worse because that percentage is decreasing, but the overall number is increasing. Next up, emergency medicine, which was a hot topic in last year's video, it's rebounding. Last year, they were calling it the death of emergency medicine. And if you don't know, there was an unprecedented 554 EM seats that went unfilled. This is likely due to several reasons, one of which was this article that was talking about how essentially the future of EM is doomed and a lot of doctors in emergency medicine will have to do some kind of career change at some point. Oversaturation. But EM, against all odds, has made a strong recovery. I think to a lot of us, maybe not as surprising because first EM was hit really hard with COVID. And now that we're a few years out, things are rebounding. During COVID, the emergency medicine burnout rates, just the issues within EM and people saying, hey, don't come into the specialty. Med students don't, you know, if you're considering this, stay away because things are terrible. That was happening a lot during COVID. So a lot of med students weren't even considering EM that otherwise would have. The other, and I think more interesting reason is actually who is applying to EM residencies. So first, since 2020's match cycle, there are now 
22% more DOs applying each year to the match. That's a huge, massive increase. And of course, some of these are gonna spill over into emergency medicine. Last year, there were 730 DOs that matched into EM, whereas this year, there are 1,047. And considering that there were 550 unfilled spots last year, you know, this extra 300 DOs matching, it's gonna definitely help EM recover, bounce back. But when you look at the number of MDs matching into EM, there is a sharp decrease. So in 2020, there were 1,713 MDs who went into EM, but this match cycle, there were 1,285. That's a cumulative drop of 25% in just four years. Now, based on the data, you could actually argue that because a lot fewer MDs are pursuing EM, it's opening up more spots that are now available to DOs and international students. We're gonna keep a close eye on emergency medicine over the next few years because a lot of stuff is happening there, a lot of changes. So in next year's match update video, we'll definitely cover that. So make sure you are subscribed. All right, so having touched on the fact that there are more DOs applying to the match now than ever before, let's talk about some other demographic trends. First, there are fewer US citizens going to international medical schools than before, which is of course 100% attributed to my excellent videos on my impressions of Caribbean medical schools. No, but in all seriousness, it's because more and more DO schools have opened and it's common knowledge that if you go DO versus Caribbean or other international school, applying to residency as a DO grad is a lot easier than as an IMG and more students are choosing the DO path with all these new schools having opened and having these new positions. The data show there are about 650 fewer US IMGs applying for residency than four years ago, with DO schools having a collective increase of over 1,500. And if you're a pre-med deciding between USMD, DO, and Caribbean, we have an excellent comparison video on the Medical Insider channel, also linked below. The other interesting demographic shift is that there are now 3,100 more foreign medical graduates applying to the match each year compared to just four years ago. And for those who aren't as familiar, we, we covered IMG versus FMG, right? IMG is from the US, went to med school overseas. Uh, FMG is from overseas. In terms of matching difficulty, as a US MD, that's the easiest to match into residency, right? You're the most desirable, if you will. Then USDO, then IMG, then FMG, because for FMGs, the program has to deal with work visas, things like that. They, they probably just don't want to figure out. Whereas with a US IMG, don't have to worry about that at all. So going back to the match data, there was an actual decrease in the percentage of FMGs who successfully matched, going from 59.4% to 58.5%. But there were 832 more matched FMGs because the raw number of those who were applying was higher. If you actually look at the different applicant groups, USMDs is the largest applicant group to the match every year. FMGs is actually the second in terms of number of people applying. Now, with a lot more FMGs and DOs applying than ever before, there was a substantial 12% increase in the total number of applicants in just four years. Now, when looking at these raw numbers, there are still some more trends to talk about. For example, there were just under 39,000 seats filled in the match, which is a 3.3% increase from last year. And with more matches, there are fewer positions that need to be filled with SOAP, the Supplemental Offer and Acceptance Program. Now, if you're not familiar, the, the match system has this complicated algorithm, which you can learn about right up here. And for those students who didn't match, they didn't have a satisfactory pairing in the algorithm, they have a second chance, if you will, with SOAP. They're essentially trying to fill an unfilled position, a position that was not filled by the match algorithm. No med student ever wants to SOAP. It's brutal, it's stressful. They may end up in a position that they don't really love, or they may not match at all a second time around, and then they have to reapply that following cycle. Now, the fact that fewer positions were offered through SOAP this year could mean that more students just matched in the regular algorithm. Although the NRMP hasn't released detailed results from this year's SOAP, it does seem to be a promising trend that I hope continues. This year's matched applicants are also the group of students who started med school at the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. They had to not only deal with the rigors and intensity and difficulty adjusting to med school, but also do so during endless Zoom calls and feeling isolated and all that, you know, the, the terrible position that a lot of us were in during that time. So kudos to them. That was, that's impressive to have gone through that and be successful on the other side. The last thing I wanna to touch on is specialty competitiveness. <laughs> There've been some interesting trends with fill rates 
And God, I, I swear there's just so much misinformation when it comes to a specialty's competitiveness. Everyone wants to say that their specialty is the most competitive because it makes it seem harder to get into, more prestigious, more desirable, yada, 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 makes them feel more badass. What I want to teach the students out there who are considering various specialties is what is and what is not more attainable so you can make a better informed decision. The NRMP even went as far as saying, and I quote, the results of the match can indicate the competitiveness of specialties as measured by the percentage of positions filled overall and the percentage of positions filled by US MD and DO seniors. That statement is insanely misleading. You should not solely base your perception of how competitive a specialty is based on the fill rate or the number of US MDs and DOs. Valid, valid measurements but not used alone in isolation because they don't tell the full picture. If you did, then internal medicine and emergency medicine would be the top of the chart this year, putting them ahead of field, saying they're more competitive than ENT, thoracic surgery, orthopedic surgery, specialties that have much higher step scores, much higher research items, publications, much higher many other things. Obviously, far more competitive specialties. So the NRMP has not released this year's charting the outcomes. We are going to be covering that in the summer when they do release it. But based on historical data, no. Internal medicine and emergency medicine did not just jump to the top, uh, no. The factors that we include in our objective, data-based, sensible competitiveness index would be step one score, step two score, match rate, top 40 NIH, AOA, and number of research items, publications, abstracts, etc. So based on the Med School Insider's specialty competitiveness index, which is based on the official NRMP data, we just manipulate it in a more systematic, objective, well thought out way. Internal medicine and emergency medicine were both actually in the bottom 10. And IM is a tier four specialty in terms of competitiveness and emergency medicine is a tier five. You can learn more about them right up here or in the blog post linked below. And if you guys wanna learn more about which specialties are more or less competitive, check out this video and also subscribe because when the 2024 charting the outcomes comes out, then we are definitely gonna make some updated videos.